Hello everyone, I'm Blaine Gilmer and welcome to Recruiting Every Second. Recruiting Every Second is a member of the Believe Podcast Network and is now focusing its attention here on the Rivals YouTube channel. So excited to be streaming live here on the Rivals YouTube channel. And if you don't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications because Adam Gorney, the Rivals staff, all the analysts over there are about to really ramp some things up here on the Rivals YouTube channel. But as I said, uh, recruiting every second with a emphasis on the SEC in second because this show on the Believe Podcast Network is all about everything and all things SEC football recruiting. And we have a jam-packed show for you here tonight on Recruiting Every Second with the end of summer on-campus recruiting. Yes, that's right. The June 1st seems like it was just the other day when the moratorium on on on-campus recruiting was lifted and it was just a rush to the floodgates of people trying to get to these campuses, these high-profile prospects And now July 31st has come and gone. It's in the month of August. Fall camps are about to start. And most of the heavy lifting when it comes to this on-campus recruiting is is, uh, the haze in the barn, so to speak. Most of the guys uh, that are going to be visiting in the fall, it'll be some late official visits, maybe some uh, unofficials for some underclassmen here and there catching out a game. But here on this show this evening, we have a jam-packed lineup with recent recruitments, including one that just went down to an SEC school, uh, which we'll talk about that in just a minute. So we're going to talk about some of the commitments that have happened here in the last few days. And then also we'll be recapping the summer recruiting momentum for all these SEC programs. Uh, Also have a feature interview with Connor O'Gara, who's the senior national columnist for Saturday down south. They do great work over there, and he's the host of the SDS podcast. Um, We recorded that one last night, which I'll actually be playing on here in just a little while for you. Had to do that to make our schedules line up, but excited to have Connor O'Gara on here in just a little while. And then I'll finish up by after that video plays coming in and taking some questions. So if you have questions on uh for me, in terms of SEC football recruiting on prospects, on programs, anything like that, drop them in the comments section, and I'll be glad to answer those for you after that interview with Connor O'Gara. A uh, little bit about me, if you haven't ever watched the show, I am also a reporter uh, and recruiting analyst for UGASports.com, the Georgia Rivals affiliate. Uh, make sure to go over to UGASports.com and catch all that stuff out, but We're definitely going to get started hitting on those recent commitments here right after do the uh, ad here for the show sponsor, which is Bet Online, guys. It is that sports time. Football is right around the corner and baseball is still going. So if you're a person that that is so inclined to do so, make sure that uh, if you're into your sports betting stuff, head over to Bet Online. It's where you should go to win money today, whether it's uh, bets during games or features, anything like that. Uh, who you know, they're who who you need to go to in terms of getting all the latest odds, news, and information on all of your online sports betting needs. So visit the website today. Just head on over to betonline.ag or use your mobile device and uh, join to receive a 50% welcome bonus as well. So that's on Bet Online. So before the next big game, head over to Bet Online and start playing today. Uh, Bet Online, your online sports book experts. Always thankful for them to sponsor the show. And now let's get into the most recent commitments. We're going to go in chronological order and start a few days ago. Auburn had a big commitment in the class of 2022, and we're focusing just on the class of 2022 here, guys, with these SEC programs for tonight's purposes. But Caden Story, a four-star defensive lineman out of Lynette High School in Lynette, Alabama, just a big-time get for Auburn in that defensive front. Caden Story is a player who can go all the way down from three technique out to uh, out on the edge and really, really – Brian Harson and company should be excited about what they're getting out of him because it's very quick off the line, uses his hands well to create separation from would-be uh, blockers on the line of scrimmage there. So Caden's story, 
over on the Plains, and they really needed that one because he's only the eighth commit, I believe, for Auburn in the class of 2022. His brother, Christian Story, plays for Alabama. So if that holds true and Caden does end up at Auburn and Christian does stay at Alabama, there will definitely be some stories written about the Story brothers, uh, if you will, when it comes to the Iron Bowl rivalry. So that's a recent commitment. Also, Je- uh, Jave Gilmore, a defensive end prospect out of Mississippi State. Well, he's going to Mississippi State. He's out of the state of Louisiana. Very rare. Did you hear what I just said? A four-star defensive end prospect leaving the state of Louisiana to head over to Mike Leach's program, Mississippi State. LSU is typically a program that really locks down those four-star defensive end type prospect. So, Jave Gilmore going over to Mike Leach and uh, LSU and Mississippi State and not going to a program like an LSU or something like that is is quite different. So, uh, you got a big-time prospect, big-time get for Mike Leach. That's the 17th commit for Mississippi State, and they are number 17 overall in the rivals team rankings here in the class of 2022. Then you have Vanderbilt landing Chase Gillespie on August 1st, I believe. Chase Gillespie is a player that Vanderbilt should be very, very happy about landing. He's the type of guy who can be used. I'm not saying he's going to be the same type of player production-wise, but he can be used similar to Anaya Smith at Texas A&M. He's really a all-purpose type back. He can be used, catch the ball out of the backfield. You could split him out as a slot. He can. He's plenty capable of carrying the football as well, really a dynamic player and somebody that Clark Lee, uh, Barton Simmons and company as they're trying to get that off the ground over there at Vanderbilt and a program that's really starting to invest more into their football program. Uh, I think that's one reason Clark Lee decided to come back to Vanderbilt is because they're finally going to start investing in the program, taking it seriously. And uh, so when Chase, a guy like Chase Gillespie comes in, that's a good pickup for Vanderbilt. Then, of course, maybe the biggest pickup so far this week was Addison Nichols to Tennessee. Addison Nichols landing at the University of Tennessee. Not shocking in the fact that his family is has several generations of prospects of, of people that have went to Tennessee. There's a lot of orange that runs through that blood of there and the power T is prominent in the Nichols family. So he ends up kind of sticking with family tradition there and being a big pickup for Josh Heupel and company. Josh Heupel really did a smart thing by going and getting some, you know, not having a ton of sec uh, familiarity, but he goes out there and he's hired coaches like a Rodney Garner, like a Willie Martinez who can teach him the ropes of the SEC, things like that. But getting a guy like Addison Nichols over schools like Ohio State, over North Carolina, over in-state Georgia. Addison Nichols is from Norcross, Georgia, a greater greater Atlanta Christian school. So that's a big pickup for Tennessee and and the kind that they're going to need to have if they're going to turn things around on Rocky Top. And then lastly, Georgia and Literally, right when we were coming on air, they picked up their second commitment in two days. The first one was last night, and Dylan Bell, a three-star receiver out of Houston, Texas, the Kincaid School, which is a prominent private school in Houston, Texas. And Dylan Bell is someone who, though he's rated a three-star for Rivals right now, I would not be surprised if he jumps up the Rivals rankings before all is said and done. Dylan Bell is a six-foot-two, 200-pound receiver that has excellent short area quickness when it comes to his burst after he after he catches the football great acceleration after he gets the football in his hands and then before the football gets in his hands he shows some gracefulness you talk about uh georgia receivers so that compact burst reminds me of kiaris jackson but then when who's a very good receiver for georgia but then when you talk about the kind of the gracefulness uh that Bell is displays when he runs timing routes, tunnel screens, things like that. It actually reminds me of Adonai Mitchell, who is at the University of Georgia and had a lot to do with Bell ending up at the University of Georgia. Really uh, vouched for him. Uh, Jim Donnan said on the UGA uh, Sports YouTube channel today. So, And then Griffin Scroggs, literally right when we came on air, he was the second commitment in two days for Georgia. Flips from Georgia Tech and comes on over to the Georgia Bulldogs. So uh, clean old-fashioned hate, getting a flip right there. Kirby Smart flipping one from Jeff Collins. 
And uh, Griffin Scroggs is a a player that plays with a mean streak. I um, mean, he's really able to finish blocks. Probably needs to work a little bit on some some flexibility. But uh, in that in that Georgia weight room strength condition program, no doubt he'll be able to do that. Plays at Grayson High School. Played at the Powerhouse Buford High School before that. So he's definitely used to playing big time competition. But those are your recent commitments. And uh, now I want to show you guys a little graphic on some of the momentum that has been created in this on-campus recruiting period. These are the number of commitments that each SEC program was able to bring in during this time of on-campus recruitment from June 1st to August 2nd. You look at Vanderbilt and South Carolina, both of them only had two commitments coming into this. Both went through coaching changes, so they had to hit the ground running, had a lot of ground to make up once it come to getting these visits out of the way and bringing in guys. So Vanderbilt and South Carolina, each with 12 during this period. I think they're around the 14 mark each now. And then you look at Alabama, Ole Miss, Tennessee, each bringing in eight, uh, eight commitments apiece. Auburn still kind of struggling to get that class being built there with Brian Harson, a new regime as well. And you're talking about they're only at eight commitments overall, even with the six they added. So, but you look at uh, these, you know, this can be deceiving to some point because you've got Georgia who only landed three commitments during this time period. Well, they had also lost two commitments and then now they've got 13 in their class, but they're number eight overall in the country with the second highest average when it comes to star ratings. They have a dead even 4.0 star average uh, Georgia does and is only behind Ohio State in the country when it comes to that. And Alabama, Georgia still have great shots of jumping up towards the top of this class by the time it's all said and done. LSU is currently ranked fourth overall. They grabbed six during this. And Kentucky's really had a stall in their recruiting momentum here lately. And they're hoping that a big turnaround this off this season with the play on the field. Kentucky, in my opinion, is going to be one of the better schools in the SEC East. So want to remind you guys again, I'm Blaine Gilmer. You can see it on the screen. You can follow me using at BGilmer18 on Twitter. You can follow the show using, using at recruiting underscore SEC. This is Recruiting Every Second, a member of the Believe Podcast Network and streaming live here on the Rivals YouTube channel. We're going to have our guest, Connor O'Gara, here on in just a little while. And uh, speaking of momentum, guys, you saw in that in that graphic, uh, Texas A&M had five commitments. But that Texas A&M, that's not telling the whole story. They have a lot of momentum going with that program. And none other, you don't need to look any further than what you saw this past weekend with the Texas A&M barbecue and pool party, just the a star-studded event. Jimbo Fisher is not afraid to bring in talent that is committed elsewhere and things of that nature. So look at this graphic right here, Texas A&M barbecue and pool party, some of the visitors, the five-star talents that were there. When you're talking about Keith and Bear Alexander, former Georgia commit, Walter Nolan, who uh, – Texas a is really trying to make a push for, even though he's just moved to Knoxville, Tennessee, to go to uh, Powell High School there, uh, which is just right outside of Knoxville. And that's a big, big deal for Tennessee their, and their chances with Walter Nolan, but Texas a making a hard push. Jacoby Matthews, who just decommitted from LSU, the safety from uh, Ponchatoula, Louisiana, he decommits. They get him immediately after that decommitment in for a visit there for the pool party. The Aggies do. Shamar Stewart, four-star, edge rusher, defensive end type. He's really up more around the 275 mark now. Just a terror and really a guy I can see rising up the rankings as well. Miami and Georgia, big players there as well. And then, of course, you see Harold Perkins over here. Uh, you know, another excellent defender that Texas A&M is pushing for. But the guys I really want to uh, touch on here before I take this graphic off, Le'Veon Moss and Julian Humphrey, both guys committed elsewhere. I think that Le'Veon Moss has a real chance of flipping away from Alabama. It just seems there's a lot of turmoil kind of going on there. He's continually uh, talking to other teams, things like that, and he goes to the pool party here. It's not often – 
Like you see uh, Alabama commitments kind of going elsewhere and doing that kind of thing. A lot of them are really solidly locked in. So uh, keep an eye on Le'Veon Moss, maybe on a flip flip watch here for the Aggies. And then Julian Humphrey, uh, he was at Georgia this past week. He's also at Texas A&M. So definitely someone that the Florida Gators should be worried about with Julian Humphrey visiting these different schools. And guys, uh, that is kind of our pre pre-show deal here for before our feature interview we got to touch on the recap of the summer recruiting momentum hit some of the latest commitments texas a&m had a lot going on and now we're going to talk to connor ogara here in terms of the impact that it's going to make on sec expansion with texas and oklahoma coming into the sec he's going to talk about when he found just found out of that at SEC Media Days and also is going to talk about the recruiting impact. So enjoy this with Connor O'Gara. And here we are with Mr. Connor O'Gara of Saturday Down South. He is going to be joining us here to tell us all about the crazy experience that it was at SEC Media Days when the news of Texas and Oklahoma deciding to request to join the SEC and what all that entailed. Connor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate you coming on here on Recruiting Every Second and being able to just kind of recant, you know, recap that that day for us. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was wild. You know, you go into SEC Media Days this year thinking there's so much to talk about with NIL stuff, with 12-team playoff, with – you know, COVID issues, which I, I didn't think was going to be talked about to the extent that Greg Sankey did, but it was a news-heavy week to begin with. And then, oh, bam, right in the middle of it, you get this bomb dropped on you on Wednesday from Brent Swerneman of Houston Crocker, who's in the room and was like 50 feet to my left. It's probably the biggest news we've had in college football outside of a season getting canceled in the last year or so. And it was it was stunning to kind of see the events unfold. And I was amazed that Jimbo Fisher went 20 some odd minutes without getting a question about Texas and Oklahoma joining the conference. I'm sitting there the entire time, my hand raised, ready to go. And I'm looking around the room like, how is nobody asking this question yet? And then, of course, Mike Bianchi of the Orlando Sentinel got it off right before me. But it was a wild day. And I think we were all struggling to process it. And just the impact of it, it impacts so many different aspects of this sport. And a lot of people have asked, why now? Why does this make sense for the future? And you could get into the financial ramifications of it. And that's really what this comes down to. But there is definitely a recruiting side of it in that I think Oklahoma and Texas are are trying to get into areas that haven't been in. And I think that they've kind of struggled to have that same sort of brand in, in Florida, in Louisiana, in Georgia, and in these places where, yeah, they've, they've had some success here and there, but to be able to consistently do it is a different ball game. And I think that they want a, a piece of the pie, and Lord knows uh, there's no shortage of competition for that in the SEC. Absolutely. Here on the Rivals YouTube channel for the first time here on Recruiting Every Second with Mr. Connor O'Gar. He's talking to us right there about the SEC Media Day frenzy when Texas and Oklahoma decided to join. And, and Connor, to that point that you just made about them wanting to get in the footprint of the different SEC schools in a recruiting aspect, it's pretty apparent now, and I would think that through your reporting and research and all that, you've you found that Texas and Oklahoma, this has been going on behind the scenes six, seven months back, right? I mean, it's been dating back for a while. It's pretty amazing that it didn't come out earlier. And I think that's a testament to those involved in the SEC because I know there was the faux outrage at SEC media days from Texas A&M and Ross Bjork is in the house. Athletic directors don't go to media days. That is not yeah. a thing. He was very much aware of what was going on. And I think A&M actually played it perfectly, to be honest yeah. with you. I thought whoever handled that from a PR standpoint did a brilliant job of, of kind of making it out to be like they were blindsided by this. So then you get fan support, and then it's like, nah, we'll play anybody, anytime, anywhere. They played it incredibly well, but people knew about this for a while. And in this day and age, this is the type of thing that usually gets leaked. And let's think about what happens if it does get leaked. Maybe the Big Ten swoops in. Maybe the Big Ten, who's making more money right now, makes a competitive offer to Texas and Oklahoma, and instead that doesn't happen. Kevin Warren is sitting there on his heels, no idea that Greg Sankey has just pulled off this massive heist. I don't want to say it's like Lufthansa 2.0 or something like that, but there's a certain element 
of highway robbery that you feel like Greg Sankey got away with here because had no had everyone known that Texas and Oklahoma were seeking new homes and that this was going on for months, don't you think there would have been a bidding war? Don't you think that something would have happened? And instead, the SEC gets to pick at the, easily the best two pieces of the Big 12. If the Big 12 is going to fall apart. What would you want to end up with? You'd want to end up with Texas and Oklahoma. And Greg Sankey somehow, some way, has looked into the crystal ball and, and seen down the road. And there's there's pay-for-play stuff that this can get into and NIL stuff that Texas and Oklahoma are trying to figure out how to handle that I think Greg Sankey's just done such a remarkable job of, of being savvy and understanding the way that the sport is heading. Absolutely. And Connor, when you talk about, you know, dating back this dating back several months, it kind of coincides with the timing of Steve Sarkeesian being brought on as the head coach of Texas. They probably had, you know, there was rumblings probably inter- internally there at Texas. They knew, Hey, we go get an sec guy. And then also I've got to wonder with Arch Manning being the prize that he is, yeah. how big is this move for Texas specifically, who is one of the, the top schools? I would say Texas, uh, another SEC school in Georgia, Clemson, uh, maybe even Old Miss right in there um, for an Arch Manning when it comes down to it. How big do you think just the branding of getting Texas into the SEC somewhere that the, you know, Manning family obviously is legendary in. How big is that, do you think, with a guy like like Arch Manning or the Manning family in general, seeing that brand of Texas being brought into their beloved SEC? So there's something that I've been trying to do for the last few months that I'm going to probably find myself doing even more so during the season. It's that whenever anything significant happens in college football, I say, what's the Arch Manning angle of this? (laughs) <laughs> because it truly feels like everything can impact his recruitment. I talked to Jeff Duncan at The Athletic, who wrote a really strong piece early on. He's got good a good relationship with the Manning family about the Arch Manning thing. And one of the things that he said that stood out was there's a possibility that Arch, you know, despite growing up where he did, where he's just surrounded by the SEC, you know, he's got two uncles that that obviously – you know, were a big part of that and his dad who didn't necessarily get to have the career that many thought he was going to. But then there's the, well, what if he wants to do his own thing? What if he wants to just go to a place like Clemson because it's not in the SEC? Yeah. And maybe, maybe in a weird way that hurts Texas. I don't know. That'd be a very Texas way to have yeah. that happen. I don't necessarily know that Arch Manning is making his decision based strictly on that. He's going to have opportunities galore, no matter where that kid ends up. I mean, we talk about the Bryce Young seven-figure ungodly numbers. That's going to be there whether he plays in the SEC or not. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of a little, an interesting little wrinkle that you can think about with Steve Sarkeesian. If he hits it big in year one, and it's believed that Texas is going to the SEC in 2023, which – I still believe that despite all of the, the talk from the Big 12 side, they're going to drag this out. This is going to be a lawsuit. I still think Texas and Oklahoma are going to the SEC in 2023. I don't think this is going to be a lame duck situation or even 2022. I mean, I think that that's that's even more you know on the table as well. But I think that the Arch Manning angle, you have to ask that question with everything going on in college football. And I think it's definitely a, a good thing to be mindful of right now. Absolutely. We're here on Recruiting Every Second, which is part of the Believe Podcast Network and also live streaming here on Rivals YouTube channel with Mr. Connor Ogar from Saturday Down South. And Connor, so we've talked about the the news that hit with Texas A&M in Oklahoma, the arch manning angle of everything. But in that, we talked about, you know, Georgia is also one of those schools. I forgot to mention Alabama, of course. How could you forget Alabama? But When it really comes to recruiting, uh, Alabama and Georgia have been the – they've set the bar in the SEC. It's been a battle for the number one class back and forth for the last five years, especially since the former Nick Saban defensive coordinator, Kirby Smart, has been at his alma mater, Georgia, as the head coach. Connor, what do you you think it's going to take for any of those schools in the SEC specifically – to get up in that upper echelon, is the NIL impact going to be a part of this? Is it just going to be the natural effect of you know the game changing you know period with with different styles like guys like Lane Kiffin bringing his his you know touch of things or Steve Sarkeesian in the future Lincoln Riley? What's what's going to be the changing factor to help teams catch Alabama and Georgia? 
the boring answer to that question is Nick Saban stops coaching football. Yeah. <laughs> that is not the imminent. It is not the um, likely scenario that I could see playing out. But the other part of that is what's what would happen? What would it look like if Oklahoma got over that hump? If Oklahoma got over that hump this year in 2021 with what is Lincoln Riley's best and most talented team with a defensive coordinator and Alex Grinch, who is highly regarded, who might not be in Norman for long if those head coaching opportunities are coming his way, which many believe that they are. If Oklahoma hits it big right now, that is the thing that can change this because if Oklahoma gets to a national championship this year, I think Lincoln Riley will have the title of best offensive mind in college football to himself. And I don't think that anybody would be able to make that claim when you look at the Heismans, the number one overall picks and all that stuff. But I think that that's something that could really shake things up. And especially if Oklahoma is going to come to the SEC soon as 2022, that would be wild to see because there are a lot of people who, you know, maybe if you're from the SEC part of the country, you know, I know Brock Vandegrift, there was that whole deal that he was going yeah. to Oklahoma and then it was Lincoln Riley. He was only going to decommit if Lincoln Riley was going to the Cowboys. And then, you know, he decommits and Lincoln Riley's <laughs> not going to the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know how much that impacts uh, kids like that because, you know, Lincoln Riley's still going to occasionally get those kids, but getting those kids on a consistent basis I think you have to be able to show we are on that level. We are able to compete for national championships. We're not just getting here to the college football playoff because of the conference that we play in. That's what I think can shake this up. And Sarkeesian and, and Lincoln Riley, if there's a list of the three best offensive minds or best offensive minds in college football, they're showing up every time unless you've got some sort of preconceived bias against those guys. I mean, that that's what I think those guys bring to the table if and when they come to the SEC. And if they hit it big before they do, look out, because that's really what's going to take a lot of these these conferences, a lot of, or a lot of these teams, rather, by, by surprise if those guys are, are already succeeding at, at a national level with brands that we kind of feel like we have figured out, but maybe we don't. And you mentioned it right there. That was kind of going to be my, my last point as we, we hit into this, is the branding, it seems to whether it's NIL recruiting, whatever. It's about these brands. And now with the the merger with Texas and Oklahoma coming in, I guess, you know, you were kind of saying there, Texas and Oklahoma maybe could be the ones that they get up into that recruiting echelon with Georgia. Is there any current SEC team that you think has maybe that that alumni base or that that, you know, certain coaching uh you know, coaching swagger there that's going to help them maybe get up there. Is it a, is it a Texas A and M? I know they have the money uh, to kind of you know do a lot of stuff. This oil money that over there and and things like that to have a big alumni base that can do a lot with NIL. Because let's just face it, a lot of these businesses out there are going to be you know hiring kids for to represent their companies because it's legal now. You know to do that kind of stuff. So I mean, is it going to be Texas A and M? Is it going to be a Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss? Is it going to be uh, Kentucky with the success they've had? Well, who's maybe your pick of the current SEC teams to kind of get in that upper echelon? I think it's a and I think a and checks every single box, and you've just been kind of waiting. When are they going to have that sustainability? What they had early on in the Kevin Sumlin era was not quite as sustainable as many thought. When you come into the SEC and you put people on notice like that with Johnny Manziel, you get a Heisman Trophy, a top-five finish – you really kind of take the league by surprise. But the problem was is that Kevin Sumlin wasn't quite the offensive mind that many thought he was, and it proved to not be the best formula when he, did have, when he didn't have Cliff Kingsbury on the sidelines. Now, I think A&M is in a different spot. You mentioned the oil money. One of my life goals is to be able to go to one of these business meetings in Dallas on like a Monday morning and just listen to, to A&M and Texas and – Listen to some of these boosters talk about college football and talk about coach buyouts and stuff like that. And maybe maybe that's me watching too much of Pony Excess, the 30 for 30 on SMU. But I would love to just experience that because I think that's what takes this over the top. And boosters, until they're told otherwise, are going to find a way to get involved with this NIL. We've already seen it at Miami, the program that they've got set up with the MMA gyms. A&M, you don't think that they're they're working on something like that right now? That They absolutely are. And they are in that position with such a recruiting hotbed. And obviously they have so much comp- competition in that state for that talent. But if Jimbo Fisher is able to continue this success and have another year reminiscent, maybe not quite 
to last year's level, but at least show that you're still competing for SEC championships. They're, they're in a prime spot. And I do kind of wonder with Georgia, how many years can you continue to recruit this well t- until you win the big one? Yeah. Because at a certain point, and, and Kirby Smart is not Jim Harbaugh. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But after a little while, the Jim yeah. Harbaugh stick kind of wore off. And you saw it in the recruiting world. I mean, all of a sudden, he goes from signing with the Stars to uh, it's just a very different place to where it's like, ah, is he going to get a top 15 class? I don't know. Yeah. And I don't think that, that Georgia would fall off like that. Kirby's too good at this to fall off in that sort of way. But the margin for error is slim, and it's going to get even slimmer when Texas and Oklahoma come into this conference. And so I'd be I'd be mindful of that. I'm not p- predicting Georgia's demise, but I like think A&M is in a prime spot right now to be able to cash in on this in, in more ways than one. Absolutely. Uh, great stuff here with Connor O'Gar from Saturday Down South. Connor, uh, before we let you go here, tell everybody about uh, what's going on on the uh, SDS podcast and where they can catch uh, all of your stuff. I'm sure everybody uh, listening to this probably is already a large majority already following, but if not, uh, tell them where they can get everything. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, Saturday Down South podcast, we've got a lot going on uh, with that kind of episode that's dropping tomorrow with uh, Aaron Murray, Dari Noka, we're talking a lot of different things right now as we begin camp, which it feels like we haven't gotten to talk a lot of ball with all that's been going on in college football world. So it's kind of good to be able to get back and doing that. But SaturdayDownSouth.com, we just have so much coverage right now. Our news team, I say it time and time again, they just absolutely dominate the space with getting all of that news up. We've had, I mean, when that Texas and Oklahoma stuff broke, we had, I think, 12 stories on it in the first like eight hours it was ridiculous so it is truly an all hands on deck type of effort that we have at Saturday Down South and uh, yeah follow us on all forms of social media it is I, I always say it's the one-stop shop for all things not just SEC football not just college football but just college sports in general absolutely Connor thanks so much for joining here on recruiting every second I uh, look forward to maybe having you on in the future appreciate it man All right, guys, that was our interview there with Mr. Connor O'Gara. We recorded that one yesterday. Uh, Very excited to have him. They do great work over there at Saturday down south. Make sure you're following Connor and make sure that you are also following this show. And I'm going to go ahead and put the down at the bottom. Follow on Twitter using at recruiting underscore sec that is the show account my account you can see on the screen there at b gilmer 18 so excited to be bringing these live streams here we're going to try uh attempt you know lord willing my goal here is to be able to do these every tuesday night on the rivals youtube channel and uh appreciate adam gorney and david berry for giving me the platform opportunity to be able to be on here and do this if anybody has any specific questions in the comment in terms of prospects or recruits, you can drop those in here right now. I'll try to uh, answer a couple of them, but just things that are coming out uh, here here soon, guys. We're going to be having different Rivals publishers on here each week. Uh, We're going to attempt to bring, bring those guys on and also be bringing in players and prospects themselves that are being recruited by multiple SEC teams. So if you are interested in that, if you like the content tonight, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications because, like I said, it's not just the Recruiting Every Second podcast, which if you want the audio version of this podcast, guys, you can catch it. Uh, anywhere, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever, just just search Recruiting Every Second or search my name, Blaine Gilmer, and it'll pop right up there for you. But not only is Recruiting Every Second going to be on this Rivals YouTube channel, but also Adam Gorney and the other Rivals analysts are going to be pumping out a lot of content as we get into football season here. So thank you so much for joining Recruiting Every Second here on the Rivals YouTube channel. And uh, like I said, I'm Blaine Gilmer, and I'll catch you next time on Recruiting Every Second.